I've tested a few Soundpeeps products in the past and I really did like them because they did have more of a warm tuning. This on the other hand is something quite different. So much so, it's got a different kind of driver that I've never heard before and it does not disappoint. Thank you to the folk at Soundpeeps for making this review possible by sending me this demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump straight into how this is built. These do come with a simple unboxing experience, but you get everything you need in it. You get the earphones in the case, a charging cable, small and large ear tips with mediums already on the earphones, the literature, and a little set of stickers of the Soundpeats mascot. Moving on to the case, it has a neat matte finish to it, but it's the kind that will pick up grease marks, so if you're picky about that, make sure your hands are clean whenever you handle it. The front of the case has Hear Your Imagination printed on it, and there's a little LED light on the front to let you know the battery level when you're charging it. The bottom part of the case has the USB-C charging port and right next to it is a sync and reset button which is nice to see since many manufacturers have been removing it. This makes things much easier when you want to do a quick sync or reset instead of going into an app and doing the same thing. The rear of the case has the branding on the hinge which is very neatly finished but I do wish the brand name was either on the front or the top of the case's lid. The earphones are laid out with easy access in mind and have a finish that matches the case but the matte finish on these don't show grease as much. The stems and grills have a neat contrast color to them with a gold copperish color and the stems have the Soundpeats brand logo right where the touch controls are. Comfort wise these haven't caused me any discomfort or pain. I usually tend to feel discomfort in my left ear with some earphones since I have a smaller left concha but I found these to be very comfortable. If you do happen to get caught in the rain or want to use these in the gym they should be safe to use since they come with an IPX4 rating. On a feature front, these come with Bluetooth version 5.3, have multi-point connectivity, active noise cancelling, and if you want to control the finer aspects of these earphones, you can do so via the Peats audio app. When you go into the app, you see the battery levels on the earphones. Sadly, there's no call out to what percentage they're at and it doesn't show the case's battery level as well. You can toggle between the noise cancelling, normal and transparent modes. You can disable the touch controls to avoid accidental inputs, which I think is a nice feature to have. You get a game mode you can activate from the app. You can activate the multi-point mode and you can customize your controls as well. By default, a single tap on the left earbud will reduce the volume by one increment. A single tap on the right bud will increase the volume by one increment, a double tap on the left and right buds will pause and play your audio, a triple tap will activate game mode from the left bud and the same will activate your voice assistant from the right bud. A long press on the left earbud will toggle between the ANC modes and the same on the right earbud will skip to the next track. You can also customize any of these inputs to do any of these gestures I've mentioned in case you don't like how they're laid out by default. Then you can click on the menu option in the home screen of the app to check on your device's information. Check for firmware updates, add a device, reset or switch the prompt tone. You also get the equalizer option with an adaptive EQ. If you want a truly bespoke tuning, you'll have to go into the adaptive EQ and do a listening test, preferably late at night when it's very quiet so you can get an accurate reading and this will tweak the sound based on your hearing. It will help your audio come alive. You also get various presets which I'll speak about in the chapter about sound. The multi-device works as well as it should but when you first set it up, it might act a little bit glitchy uh, so you have to put the Bluetooth off on your primary device when you sync up to your secondary and after that it should be fine going forward. Now one thing I did notice while using the multi-device connectivity is if you are playing media on your primary device and you play the media on your secondary device the secondary starts playing uh, the media but there's no sound that comes in because it's still pulling in audio from the primary device so you will have to pause your primary device only then will the audio playback from the secondary so when you even switch back you'll have to do that, which is the only thing uh, that really is a bit of a bother. But uh, when you do get a phone call or if you make a phone call, uh, it immediately uh, goes on to that specific device uh, to accept or make the phone call, which it does pretty quickly. Uh, and then moving on, when it comes to its latency, there is a bit of a delay when it comes to consuming any visual media, a very slight delay. I think it's it's more or less all right if you are a casual content absorber, if you are, say, traveling or if you just want to watch content, it should be okay. But if you are a stickler for a faster response time, you can switch on the game mode. And the game mode does um, uh, speed up the uh, reaction time a bit more. Uh, and it does switch on to having 70 milliseconds uh, worth of response time, which is much quicker than its normal mode. So instead of going on about this, uh, let me quickly show you a latency demo with games as well as with videos. Team Deathmatch.
These come with 12mm dynamic drivers and they support SPC Aptex and Aptex Adaptive Codex. On a volume front, these don't really amp as much as I'd like them to. But having said that, these don't really thin out too much or lose their roundedness even at lower volumes down to even 5%. I've noticed that most of the testing I do with other TWS earphones, I'm usually hovering around the 45 to 50% uh, volume limit on my phone. But with these, I found that I was anywhere between 60, 65 and 70 to hit a sweet spot. Now, going above 70% can get a bit uncomfortable. It is a little beyond what you should be listening to. And I wouldn't recommend listening to any audio of these above 70% if you want to preserve your hearing. When it comes to its active noise cancelling, this does come with six microphones. That is about three microphones per earbud. And it does a pretty good job. Now, the thing is, uh, ANC is normally catered for eliminating drones. I do get a few people in my comments saying, I can hear people talking next to me. ANC is not tuned to cut out people talking next to you. It will look for drones. So if you're in a very busy setting in an airport or a restaurant, there's a drone that there's a hum that develops when a lot of people are talking. It will look for that or it will look for uh, droning noises from uh, fans or from AC motors or engines uh, in an aircraft or if you're in a car. I find this to do uh, a pretty good job when it comes to eliminating those droning noises. Now, I have noticed with some uh, other products in the same price range, there is a higher frequency that bleeds in, it sort of finds its way in when you have the active noise cancelling mode on and this is with maybe slightly older earphones. This one in particular does stretch out to those higher frequencies and really does mute everything around you pretty well. So uh, on an ANC front, I think it is a very good performer. I do like how it uh, does sound. Uh, overall now you don't have different modes you can toggle between it's just the active noise cancelling on or normal or transparency mode uh, but it does do a good job of this i have not felt any pressure in my ear some earphones that have aggressive active noise cancelling tend to cause a bit of a pressure i have not felt that with this and soundpiece claims that this can reduce noises up to 45 decibels worth now i don't doubt that because uh, it does do a pretty good job uh, i do stay next to a very busy street uh, and it manages to keep a lot of that noise uh, pretty much out now those same three microphones per year but those same six microphones that help with active noise cancelling also contribute towards its environmental noise cancelling for whenever you do want to make any phone calls so if by any chance you do want to know how this is going to sound uh, to your recipient in a busy setting uh, there really is only one way to show you how this would perform So I'm calling from the usual busy street. I do all of my call tests from just to give you a sense of how much noise these earphones are going to be battling. And of course, you can see two wheelers, four wheelers. There will be some three wheelers, and you will get some trucks blowing pressure horns as well. Uh, and of course, there is some construction work going on behind me, which has been going on, which is never ending, of course. And uh, of course, uh, these do have a lot to battle with, considering uh, the amount of noise. I'm literally only about eight feet away from this main road. Uh, and uh, anyway, I've been on the camera microphone all this time and I'll switch over to the Soundpeats Capsule 3 Pro Plus ear uh, microphones right about now. So uh, this is the overall vocal tonality you can expect it to carry over to your recipient uh, in this kind of setting when there is a lot of uh, ambient noise. This will certainly perform a lot better in a more controlled setting when you're at uh, office or at home, of course. Uh, and um, uh, one thing to keep in mind is this does have six microphones that's three microphones per year but that are right now uh, at this present moment handling the active noise cancelling for me so i don't hear all of this feeding in and it's also in, uh, handling the environmental noise cancelling so you can hear my voice carried over to you without as much noise from the back so one thing i do like to do uh, when i'm on this uh, phone call is uh, go into the app and toggle between the active noise cancelling modes to see uh, if uh, this toggling does create a difference uh, by putting more or lesser stain on the environmental noise cancelling. So I'll go into the app right about now. Uh, and as you can see, I am in the noise cancelling mode. And as you know, there is no toggling control with it. And I have to say it is performing reasonably uh, pretty well, uh, considering I'm this close to all this noise. Uh, so now I'll move over from noise cancelling over to normal now. She says normal mode and it takes just half a second to switch over. So now I can hear all the rumbling coming in. So now, uh, whether or not you can hear a difference in my tonal uh, quality for my voice is something you need to decide. You are sitting in the reviewer seat right now. You have to check and see. Uh, and now for the part I don't like, I'm going to go over to transparent mode. And I hope that uh, nobody blows their pressure on because this can be quite unpleasant for me. So I am getting all the feed in of the traffic. Uh, I, I can hear the road noise, the engine noises, everything that is coming through. 
right now. So uh, again, you are the best just to see if there is a difference right now, if there is more of a load uh, on my vocal tonality coming over to you. And I'll switch right over back to noise cancelling just for my benefit, which it has just done. So uh, there you have it. That's pretty much the uh, voice, uh, the call demo uh, that will carry over to your recipient in this kind of environment. And I do hope that this demo has given you a better understanding of these earphones. And I will see you back at the studio. These come with 12mm dynamic drivers and come with solid state XMEMS drivers as well. They have a frequency response of 20Hz all the way up to 40,000Hz and support the SPC, AAC and LDAC codecs for higher resolution audio. When it comes to the volume, I have tested these mostly at about 35% volume but uh, they do open up a little bit more at 40-45%. 50% can get a little too loud for me. So if you do intend on preserving your hearing, I wouldn't say going, uh, don't go beyond 60-65% for a prolonged period of time if you do want to preserve your hearing. But I'd say at lower volumes, a lot of audio gear does thin out, uh, but this does somehow maintain a nice uh, rounded uh, presentation even as low as 25 and 20% volume. The sound stage of these earphones depends a lot on what kind of recording and what codec you're listening to. If you do have a high res source, I would recommend listening to these uh, with the LDAC codec. I've been doing all my testing on the LDAC codec, of course. Now, the stage does have slightly more expansion than a regular set of earphones. It does seem to sit about maybe an inch and a half, two inches out of your head, uh, which is quite impressive. And there is some amount of vertical stage, which is, of course, quite impressive. Now, I think uh, the solid state XMEMS drivers do contribute towards this uh, because uh, I have heard a lot of dynamic drivers uh, in, with earphones in this price range and they are just not able to push out this kind of staging with this. Now, uh, these drivers are of course very new in tech uh, and these are the first ones that I'm listening to and they obviously do work very well with uh, high resolution music. Uh, and uh, coming back to the stage, it does have good left and right separation with a well-centered phantom channel. The imaging on these, I think, can also be contributed towards those solid-state drivers because the overall imaging of these, the detail is clean. And by clean, I don't mean they've accentuated the high frequencies like a lot of other manufacturers do and made it a little more shrill to give you the illusion of better imaging and detail. No, uh, this is properly well-detailed. In fact, uh, the edges of uh, any instrument or, or texture that you're trying to focus in on aren't overly uh, sharpened. So it doesn't get fatiguing over longer listening sessions. It is more of a rounded edge. It, it does have a soft uh, approach in its overall delivery. So if you do want to zone in on any nuances to enjoy your music, uh, those XMEMS drivers do a very good job of presenting them over to you. High frequencies carry on over to you with a calmness that makes listening to these easy on the ear, even until the batteries run dry. This range doesn't cross into being aggressive at any stage. I've thrown multiple songs, artists and genres of music at it, expecting some recordings to hurt the ear. But this range manages to maintain a sense of maturity in its presentation. It certainly has an elevation instead of being flat in its delivery, but has a sense of being very confident in what it's doing. Violins, percussive instruments, reverb and echo that sits in the highs all come to you with purpose, but in a slightly apologetic manner so as to not offend you. Listening to the Danish National Symphony Orchestra perform I will wait for you there's a good amount of emotion this track carries which these earphones are able to bring across to you with those XMEMS solid state drives I was expecting these to handle this range with a certain amount of shrillness but I haven't experienced any of it with everything I've thrown at it these aren't audiophile grade in their presentation but they sure do a great job of getting closer to it mid frequencies do have a pullback presentation compared to the high frequencies but thankfully don't have a prominent recessed lower mid region thanks to this tuning male vocals tend to maintain a roundedness in their approach instead of sounding thin or as if the performer has a cold. This also helps female vocals sound more rounded instead of sounding more nasal. There is good instrument and vocal separation in this range. So whether you're listening to instrumental or something heavy, having more of a load on these drivers don't cause much strain. I suppose having two drivers in this case does have its benefits. Listening to Stained perform It's Been A While, Aaron Lewis's voice does come across to you with a depth I usually notice disappearing with some wireless earphones 
phones in this price range. Ensuring this range has a fuller approach only ensures you'll enjoy your lyrics and instruments all the more with these earphones. I do wish the mid-range did take a slightly more forward approach, but only with some recordings. Low frequencies are looked after by the 12mm driver, so it's got nothing else to worry about. It's able to handle this range quite effortlessly while ensuring it doesn't interfere with details or the mids. It's certainly got an elevation in its tuning, but surprisingly doesn't create an uncomfortable pressure in the ear like most earphones do. This range is confident, large and shies away from being bloated, which is a nice welcome from a set of TWS earphones. It does have more prominence in the upper and mid bass than the sub bass region, so it's perfect for electronic dance music, minus the bloat, but also somehow manages to have a sense of decorum when playing back jazz, blues or acoustic music. Listening to Daft Punk perform Voyager, there's a prominent lower bass line that's the foundation of this track and boy is it a fun listen. These do have a largeness in their bass performance that you'd expect from a set of headphones, but part of me wishes it were a little bit tighter in its presentation. But this is me being a little too picky. It handles this range quite well for a set of wireless earphones and is a nice refresh compared to the many that only carry bloat in this range. I've tested these in their default Soundpeats Classic preset, so if you do want to play around with the sound, you have to head into the app to customize it. You get a 10 band manual EQ with a plus minus 6 dB gain, which should give you more than enough control. But if you're not someone who likes tweaking your audio manually, they do give you 9 presets you can choose from, which are the Soundpeats Classic preset, which I quite like and tested these earphones on. Treble Boost does as it says and emphasizes the higher frequencies, making these sound a little richer, but this tuning can be uncomfortable for someone who is high frequency sensitive. Bass Boost does what you'd expect and pumps up the lower frequencies to an extent extent where the mids and highs start getting muddy. Bass reduce drops the lower frequencies below a flat response, making the mids and highs a lot more prominent and leaves your music sounding unbalanced. Electronic introduces a nice kick in the lower frequencies which will work very well for electronic dance music and has a warmer response in the mids compared to the last preset. Pop makes the mids and bass a little thinner sounding which seems to make your audio sound like slightly older recordings. Classical opens up the lower frequencies a lot which can enhance orchestral music and maintains a good amount of detail when listening to this genre of music. Rock tightens up the highs, making them more prominent and makes the mids seem a little more forward. This does work well for heavier genres of music, especially since it maintains a good amount of depth without eating much into the mids. And you get folk, which thins things out from the bass and mids. The highs do come through much clearer than the other ranges and the bass has more emphasis in the mid and sub bass regions. So to sum up, on a build front, I do like how this is made, uh, more so the earphones, uh, because the case does seem to have this uh, matte finish that will hold a lot of grease and maybe sweat marks. So uh, if you live in a humid place and your uh, hands can get clammy, it will show on the case quite a lot. The earphones don't have that same finish. It is a very different kind of matte finish. Uh, it's not going to show the, the greasing that the case will show. And I also do like the contrasting colors they've got, you know, with the uh, gold copperish kind of color in on the on the mesh on the inside and as well as the stem, it does look quite nice. Uh, comfort wise, I have not had any issues with these. Uh, I, I usually do have some discomfort with earphones if I've worn them for more than about 45 minutes, but this thing is very comfortable. I've used it for a few hours at a stretch while doing all my testing and it's a very comfortable set to use. Feature wise, I think it's got pretty much everything you really need. Uh, it's got kind of the latest Bluetooth version 5.3. It's got multi-device pairing. Uh, the one thing that it may not have that people want is maybe spatial audio. Uh, now, I, I, it's not something I've missed because I'm not a fan of spatial audio. I do find it to be a bit of a gimmick, but uh, I do prefer stereo sound. Uh, but I think a few people might miss that. And maybe also the extra features of, you know, uh, uh, more intricate active noise cancelling control because this is just active noise cancelling on or normal or even uh, the, uh, you know, letting your environment in. So a lot of people do like to control the levels of ANC this has, but this doesn't have that option. It's either on or it's, uh, it's one of these other modes. ANC wise, I think it's a pretty good performer. In fact, this does eliminate a higher frequency that does bleed in with some other earphones that I've tested in the past that are in a similar price range. Uh, I like that it's able to get a much wider spectrum uh, of noise cancelled. Uh, and of course, it does cut out fans, AC motors and cars very well. I can't really complain about it. Uh, Soundpiece does claim that it can cut out up to 45 decibels of noise. I, I, I can't challenge that because it does a good job and I don't have any testing uh, sort of equipment to 
to counter that. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, in fact, it's at par with a lot of other mass market earphones uh, that I've tested that claim a 50 dB uh, uh, noise level drop or even 40 dB. So I'd say it's, it's somewhere there for sure. If you would like to know how your voice would carry over to your recipient in a noisy setting, I have done a call demo in that kind of environment. So if you have missed that chapter, you can head on over to that chapter. Uh, I have done that test. Sound-wise, I really like how this has been tuned because there is a crispness in its overall delivery. And I think having two separate drivers to handle two different things, I think is a very good uh, idea. There are a lot of audiophile brands that have been doing this. They are using a multitude of uh, drivers that are handling different frequencies. And that's pretty much what Soundpiece is doing. I think the dynamic driver is handling the lower frequencies. I'm not too sure where the, the uh, crossover is, where it sort of only handles the low frequencies and where the XMEMS driver handles uh, the mids and higher frequencies, but uh, it does do it reasonably well. There is a nice handoff. Um, there is a lot of nice uh, detailing in the high frequencies and mids without being too aggressive. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, brands usually have the one dynamic driver and uh, they tweak the high frequencies to an extent where people think it's detail, but it's, it's not. They've just tweaked the high frequencies. This has a nice soft, supple approach in its overall high frequency and detailing. The mid frequencies, however, I do wish were a little more forward. They are a little too recessed, a little too pulled back. But I suppose this is the tuning they've gone for with the Soundpeats classic tuning. Uh, it does change its overall portrayal slightly with the different tunings you choose. And of course, you can customize it uh, via uh, the presets within the app or use the manual EQ. The low frequencies I find to be surprisingly effortless. There are a lot of brands that go for maximum sub uh, tuning or maximum mid-range, uh, mid-low uh, frequency tuning for a kick, but uh, those tend to just be a little too bloated and uh, I, I tend to feel a strain with lower frequencies when it goes on for a little too too much or if it's over uh, accentuated. So this is more or less effortless. It's not handling the mids and the highs. It's only catering to, to the lower frequencies and thanks to that it is effortless sounding and it is big and large sounding uh, because I mean it doesn't uh, take on an extra load. It is doing its own thing. Uh, so I think the overall tuning of this is pretty nice. I like how Soundpeats has tuned it. So of course, if you do like uh, how these sound and if you do want to have the latest technology uh, in your ear, you can consider buying these earphones, which I do think are good value for money. So coming to the price of these, well, uh, at the time of uh, recording this video, these do have a maximum uh, retail price of about $89.99. But uh, you can make these yours at a selling price of about $58.49. Uh, dollars. Uh, I think that is also provided. You use the ex exclusive discount code that Soundpeats has provided, uh, which I'll throw up on the screen right now. Uh, you can get uh, an extra 35% uh, discount with this. So I think that's how you can get it for about 58.49. Uh, now this code is valid from today, uh, the day of posting this video, 22nd August 2024 to the 22nd of September 2024. So. It should be valid for about a month. Uh, but even if you're buying this at uh, a higher price, uh, considering how it sounds, I have tested a whole lot of earphones in this price range. I've always liked how Soundpeats tunes their stuff. They, they do know what they're doing on a sound front. And of course, I do like their overall presentation towards audio and even their built-in. In fact, if you want a simpler set of earphones in the feature department, this is the one to go for because there are a lot of brands who are only focusing on features. Some things are just loaded uh, to the absolute brim with features, uh, so much so it becomes more about what they can do rather than how they sound. So I like that uh, Soundpeach is still focused more on the sound than anything else. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative and I do hope that I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. If you would like to help support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning in to Paul's POV for some sound advice.